In this video, it is a personal best, the greatest comic in the wild find to date. Welcome to the Paper Chase channel where I give away all of my secrets so you guys can beat me to the punch. So I got a notification on a Thursday that an estate sale was happening near me. They had comic books and I scrolled through some of the photos and I could see that it was a lot of kung fu oriented comics. There was definitely a lot of Iron Fist books, a lot of Master of Kung Fu Shang-Chi books. I still wasn't sold on it. It looks like they had prices on every single comic and I couldn't really decipher what the prices were, but it looks like maybe they did some research and this could be a waste of time depending on how accurate their prices are. So nighttime comes, I'm laying in bed, I'm contemplating, will I go to this thing, yes or no? I set my alarm clock anyway, just to give me the opportunity and I kept laying there and I kept on thinking, this seems like a Bronze Age collection here that they're gonna be selling. What are the possible books that we could find in a Bronze Age collection? Books start running across my mind. A Hulk 181, ASM 129, maybe a giant size X-Men. I'm like, what if they're there, you know? So, I woke up at 5.30 with these thoughts in my head and I couldn't go back to sleep. So I said, screw it, we're going. We're going, we're gonna make a day out of it. I'm glad that I went. Here's some of the footage. What is up guys? Happy Friday. So we are about to pull up to this estate sale. I just drove by and there's already a line of people uh, standing outside waiting probably a half a block long. These things can get crazy. So uh, we are gonna go wait in line and hopefully we will come out with something good. Well, we just parked out here outside of this estate sale. I thought maybe there would be a few people. I'm about 40 minutes early and there's a block of people just standing out there. Um, real quick, I'll throw at you four quick tips if you're gonna do one of these estate sales. Tip number one is show up early. Always there's gonna be people that stand outside waiting for these things. There's people that make a living off of doing stuff like this. Uh, so get there early at least 45 minutes to an hour before time. Number two is bring cash. I would always, depending on what you're buying, bring at least three to $500 cash. You never know what you're gonna need. You would hate to get something in your hands and not have enough cash to seal the deal right away. And then all of a sudden you have to put it down, run to an ATM, and then whatever you were looking for is gone by the time you get back. Not a good feeling. Number three is if you're doing comics, this is kind of like, this is kind of more of an investment for the future. But the next one is get cards made uh, and give these out to the people that run these estate sales because it's possible that these people do this all the time. They might want to surpass the whole pain of getting everything ready to sell to a group of people and they might just call you directly. Don't telegraph your intention of what you're trying to buy. So I'm not going to show up here in a uh, in a Marvel shirt, anything that indicates and I'm looking to find comics because I don't want to rile up anybody else there that might be looking to find them as well. A lot of times too, you can be completely wrong because I've gone to these and I've seen a person where I could have swore they were gonna be running for the comics. Or the dude goes straight for the Christmas decoration. And then all of a sudden you get to the comics and it's like a little 65 year old woman and she's busting out a key collector app. So anyway, those are the quick tips. Show up early, bring cash, Network while you're there, and don't telegraph your intentions. Let's go wait in line. All right, we're done. Hit a jackpot. When we get back, I'm gonna show you what I got. Okay, we are back. Saw a little bit of footage there. Now it is time to show you guys what I picked up in my greatest personal best comic find to date. And keep in mind, sometimes when you come across these giant books in the wild and there's other people that are hunting, I don't know if any of you guys ever experienced this, but I start grabbing random shit. I'm like a squirrel 
that just found like this nut, trying to hide it and stuff leaves in front of it. So once I saw this big book, I'm picking up books that I don't even care about just because I don't want people to see what I have. So some of these books are that. Number one, I did pick up an uh, issue of Spectacular Spider-Man 116, a $25 book that I got for three bucks, but it's a mid-grade copy. So, you know, I might put it on whatnot for a dollar starting bid, who knows. Speaking of whatnot, I wanna remind you guys to check out the description below where you can see where I sell books on eBay, Instagram, whatnot, and shortboxed. Okay, another book that I picked up was Moon Knight, issue number eight, volume one. This is a Bill Sienkiewicz cover, love this cover. Um, I have one already that is a little bit higher grade, so this one probably will go to my next whatnot sale. Next up on the list is Marvel Premiere, issue number 18. Now this here is the, I believe, third appearance of Iron Fist, which is, you know, that's a minor, that's considered a minor key. Um, this was definitely one of the older books that I picked up. These older Marvel premiere books are just cool, you know? Got that one. Next up, we got a Marvel premiere, issue number 21, just an earlier Iron Fist book. This is one that I picked up because, let me just start to pile on some stuff here. They were all decently cheap, three to six dollar books. All right, next on the list, they definitely had some Daredevil books in there. So I picked up this great classic Frank Miller Electra Daredevil cover, issue 179. Again, I think maybe four dollars is what I paid for this one. Next up on the list, Moon Knight, number one. I would say this is in like fine plus condition, but again, sold for six bucks. Could not pass this up for six dollars. Now we got three more books. The last three books are my favorite pickups, and this one is probably one of my favorite Captain America covers. Um, this is Captain America issue 272. This is actually the first appearance of Vermin. And I, this is a Mike Zett cover, and I freaking love this cover. I mean, look at this thing. I believe this one's in better condition than my personal copy. So uh, the other one that I have, I don't know, this is one of those covers that I like so much that you just want to hoard them. You just want every copy that you find, you just want to keep them. So I don't know. Uh, beautiful book though, beautiful art. I had a discussion with somebody on Instagram about the symbolism on this book. Uh, comment below, what do you think this cover symbolizes? Okay, two books left, and these books are both massive. One of the bigger books that I found is Daredevil issue 168. First appearance of Elektra, classic Frank Miller cover. Uh, Elektra is spelt wrong in there in the title, as I'm sure a lot of you know. This is a pretty big Bronze Age book here, and um, they had this one priced, I won't say accordingly, but they had this book priced below fair market value. So let me say this, like I said in the car, before I head out to these things, I get pretty much a sum of money that I'm comfortable spending if the value is there. It was after I found the bigger book that I'm about to share with you that I decided, okay, this book is decently priced. I'll go ahead and pick this up because I've already inherited so much value from this other find. So it was because of the book I'm about to show you that I decided to pull the trigger on this book. Um, I would call this somewhere around a seven to seven five with a good clean and press. Um, and I picked this one up for 200 bucks. Now the value is there all day in this condition at $200. And now it's time for the big one. Here's something to consider. When I walk in, I start, I take an immediate right. I start going up some stairs into some bedrooms. I don't know where the comic books are gonna be. This is a pretty large house but I actually ended up stumbling upon the comic book table about five minutes after I entered the property. So at this point, I'm late to the game. I'm thinking, you know what? If there's anybody here that knows anything about comics, they've already searched through all this, so I can definitely say I was a bit deflated whenever I approached the table. So I chose a stack of books and I just started flipping. And as I got about six books in, I realized that no true avid comic collector has approached this table yet. Because I ran into Iron Fist issue number 14. The first appearance of Sabretooth from the X-Men. This is a book that I was literally thinking about in bed 
the night before. What if this book is there? $6 is what I paid for the book. When I saw this book, I knew that that table was untouched and and I know you guys know the feeling when you're in uncharted territory. When you look through a long box or a short box that hasn't been touched or it'll flip through in years. For anybody that knows what they're looking for, it was the greatest feeling and the greatest find that I've ever had in the wild. I think this book with a good clean and a good press might be able to reach an 8.0 and 8.5. It's definitely in respectable condition. It's gonna take a little TLC. But this one's it. This goes to show you if you're having second thoughts, if you have that inkling of a feeling, that gut instinct feeling that I need to go out there, follow it. I was thrilled when I found this. It's gonna get graded. It's staying in the personal collection as of right now. Here's the kicker. They actually had the second appearance of Sabretooth, which is Iron Man and, not Iron Man, Iron Fist and Power Man. Uh, I can't remember the issue number, but they had the second appearance there and they actually had that at a higher price than this. These people, they're doing the best they can to price these things. Um, they're, they're not gonna go through every single book. And this is a book that to the naked eye of a non-comic collector does not look appealing. It does not look like it has any significance whatsoever. But that's it, I wish you guys the best when you go out there and you're looking for stuff. It's a great feeling when it happens. I love these hunting videos and I wanna do more of them and there will be more of these to come. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like if you feel like this video deserved it and I'll see you on the next one.